Sometimes when people lose loved ones, particularly older people, when they're older people, um, they find comfort in the fact that someone else in the family is born around the same sort of time. I remember years ago, um, a, a lovely faithful member of St. Luke's who was dying of cancer and in the hospice. Um, just at that same time, her granddaughter gave birth to a lovely um, child and was able to bring the child to show to her grandmother who was so close to death. And the family took great comfort in that. Um, it seemed to be a kind of almost compensation for the life that was lost. As an old one passed away, a new life came into being. In my family, my grandfather was, um, I think, 12th out of 13 children. Um, they had big families in those days. Um, and he was particularly close to his, I think, younger brother, probably the 13th. Um, they grew up together, they no doubt shared a bedroom together uh, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and during the war, um, his brother got married. And a few days after he got married, he went off on a naval ship. Um, and that ship was sunk within a week. And he drowned and he died. It was a tragic loss of a young man. But soon after, my dad was born. And my granddad named him Reginald, after his brother. Maybe it meant my dad was stuck with a, a name that was much older than him. But it was a way of saying, actually, here's a new life. Some kind of compensation for the loss of this loved one, the brother that he was so close to. New birth gives hope. There's a future for the new child to grow up to. Life goes on. The death of a loved one, no matter how much it can seem to bring grief and darkness, does not bring an end to life in totality. And of course, at the heart of the Christmas story is a birth, the birth of a baby. Yet the point of what the Bible wants to show us is that this baby is different. This baby brings more than hope of a new life. This baby somehow can bring comfort and peace and life to the whole world. In Luke's Gospel, as um, we just heard from, from Claire, after Jesus is born, it goes on to talk about what happens next. Um, in they, the, those days, the, the Jews, the custom was to take the baby to the temple to dedicate the child there, and Joseph and Mary, being good, good Jews that they were, did that. And in the temple, we're told that there was this man called Simeon. He was probably an older man because we're told that he was um, waiting to die or ready to die after this incident. But we're also told that he was a good man. We're told that he was righteous. He wanted to do what was right. He wanted to um, follow God's laws. He wanted to... Um, be good to people and show love to people and kindness to people and generosity to people. He wanted to be someone who spoke the truth. He wasn't out to con people or confuse people, but help them. He says he was a devout man. He took seriously his faith. He wanted to get to know God, to learn from God, to pray to God, to listen to what God said in the Bible. And it says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit. This was someone that God could speak through. This is the kind of guy that you could listen to. The kind of guy who was worth listening to. And yet this, this man, Simeon, was also an expectant man. You see, all of Israel were waiting for God to send a saviour, a messiah, a Christ. They were expecting, they were hoping that God would do something amazing. But for Simeon, this was something personal as well. God had told him that he would see the Christ before he died. And so the hope that was linked to Israel was somehow encapsulated in this one man, this one good man, sort of summed up the whole of Israel. And when Jesus is brought into the temple precincts by Mary and Joseph, this young couple, 
looking like any other ordinary baby. Simeon comes up to them and says, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. And he goes on to say that this baby is the fulfillment of God's promises. Not just the personal one to him to have seen the Messiah before he dies, but the one who can bring hope to all of Israel and more than Israel to the whole world. Light to the Gentiles, as he says. This baby is special, he says. This baby is God's salvation. But why does Simeon find such comfort? Why does Simeon able now to face death himself? Why does he have peace because of this baby? What's special about this baby that helps him to even face death with peace? Well, it's a baby that is salvation. You see, if this world is all there is, if there is no God, no heaven or hell, as John Lennon sings in Imagine, then there's no answer to our greatest problem. There's no answer to death. No ultimate hope. All we can do is make the most of our life now and hope the children we leave behind might remember us for a bit at least. And even if there is a God, why should God care for us? After all, we now know how vast and enormous and incredibly magnificent the universe is. But we're just these strange creatures wandering around on this lump of rock, orbiting an insignificant sun that's just one of trillions in a universe. Why does God care about us? Why should God care about us? And yet the amazing truth at the heart of Christmas is that in this baby that is born, God has come. God has become one of us. Jesus is God with us. This baby shows that the God who created the whole universe does indeed care for human beings like you and me. He cares for our darkness. He cares for our sadness. He comes to rescue us, to bring salvation. That is the incredible message at the heart of Christmas. And he didn't come just to be one of us. He didn't come just to be a human. He came also to give his life as a sacrifice, to die for us. And in dying for us, to rise again, that we can have life again. He came to break the power of our sin and rebellion against God and the death that results. He came to create a way back to God, to reconcile us to God, to create peace between us and God. He came to give us light in our darkness. He came to give hope to a world of despair. He came to give life, even though we die. And somehow Simeon, as he looked at that baby in those temple precincts all those years ago, saw what God was doing through Jesus. He saw that God cares. He saw that God is with us. He saw that God has come to save us. And he found peace and hope. He was ready to face his own death knowing that God cared for him and would bring him through death to life. This Christmas, will you grasp the great truth that is at the heart of the Christmas message? That in the baby of Jesus, God has come to save us and give us hope. Let's pray. Father, as we thank you for Simeon's example and as we listen to what he has to say to us help us to grasp the enormity of what you did in Jesus help us to see the light that it brings to our darkness the hope that it brings to our despair and give us that confidence of life with you forevermore through Jesus that we may have peace in the face of death 
In your name we pray. Amen.